Hi, I'm Steve Borkenhagen. Uh, grew up here. I've been here my whole life. Uh, I've had businesses downtown since the mid-70s and raised my children downtown. Uh, my parents lived here and uh, I care about our city and uh, want to do something good for all of us. <clears throat> A few years ago, a couple of friends and I believed <clears throat> and continue to believe that uh, San Jose and Silicon Valley should have some kind of an iconic landmark. There's irony, I think, to the fact that the richest place on earth, maybe in the history of the world, if you take Sil Greater Silicon Valley, that there really isn't an architectural or an artistic landmark. So we, for a while we talked about doing something related to the old San Jose Light Tower that you probably all know about. It was uh, in existence from 1881 until 1915. It fell down in a storm. It was one of the 50 or 100 tallest structures in the world at the time. Uh, it really was a landmark for our community. It fell down in 1915. Sal Pizarro came up with the phrase phantom landmark that in a sense it's still the landmark people talk about for our city and even, even for uh, the South Bay which is really odd. So so we believe that we should have some kind of a spectacular, iconic thing. Now what should that thing be? Uh, one could uh, argue for almost anything. It could be architectural, it could be more artistic, <clears throat> it could be landscape. If you think about some of the great places in the world, whether it's Bouchard Gardens in uh, Victoria, or the Statue of Liberty, or the Eiffel Tower, or the uh, Guggenheim in Bilbao, they all take different forms, but what they share is their, this, the heart of their communities. They're landmarks that people around the world associate with those places, and not only locals, but also regional, national, and international people. When they think of these places, they think of them, they make our heart race. Uh, it's it's uh, similar to what art does in all of our lives. So our mission is to create an artistically inspired and iconic structure that builds civic pride and I might point out uh, causes economic development within San Jose and Silicon Valley. We've been to city council twice already, first uh, about a year ago, essentially just giving a status to do a site selection study. Then we did a very comprehensive site selection study, which was uh, done by a third party, Steinberg Hart. Uh, the mayor's been really important. Vice Mayor Chappie Jones has been a, a real important supporter to us. We've had two unanimous votes at the city council. We want to give a gift to the city. We are not asking the city to spend money and build this. We are doing it privately. We've raised over a million dollars so far and that will essentially get us through the phase that we're in now. So what's the point of this? Create something symbolic and beautiful that's respected, that's a landmark, could be technology, art, architecture. Something I want to be real clear about, we got a lot of press when uh, the council unanimously approved our site, which I'll get to in a moment, uh, in March. And some of the articles were, were very much tongue-in-cheek and were making fun of Silicon Valley and San Jose and implying that we're going to build a big, uh, the head of Steve Jobs or something and do something that was sort of a tribute to bro culture and whatever these people think nerd culture is in Silicon Valley. That is not our goal. Now we are going to have an open ideas competition starting this week, which I'll tell you more about in a moment. Yay! That, thank you. <laughs> that will ultimately lead to a design, but it is what's called an open ideas competition. So people can submit any idea whatsoever. So we will get ideas that are architecturally driven, that are artistically driven, that are more sculptural, that might be uh, trees, it might be more of a landscape type plan, it might involve water, it can literally be anything. So uh, I didn't appreciate the uh, kind of silly um, articles that were in some press about what we were doing because we're trying to do something serious and enduring, something that our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren will be able to enjoy throughout their lives and again share with all the people in the world. And so we're trying to, as it says, connect innovative people around the world. We have a massive PR and advertising campaign that's launching on Tuesday. <clears throat> Our goal is to get submittals from every 
where on earth. Uh, the winner of this competition could end up being some kind of a well-known architect or artist who has international fame, or it could be some young student in uh, Shanghai or Argentina or Paris who's just beginning his or her career. You probably all know the story of Maya Lin who designed the Vietnam War Memorial. That was an open ideas competition, just like the one we are uh, holding. One of our jurors is a famous artist from San Francisco, and part of the reason she agreed to serve on our jury is that she uh, really began her career by winning an uh, ideas con design, design competition. So we're really excited about the possibility that one of you or one of your children or grandchildren or anyone can submit an idea. The barrier to entry is low on the ideas competition. It's really an idea, a vision, a sketch with a narrative and a couple of views of it, a plan view. Uh, etc. And so we are going to help the winner of the ideas competition. Actually we're going to have three finalists. Each of those finalists will be chosen by a jury later this year. We will give each of them a hundred and fifty thousand dollar stipend to take their ideas and turn those ideas into a true plan. So the reason I bring that up is that we will help them assemble a team. So if one of our three finalists is someone who doesn't have a lot of technical skill, we will come help them um, form a team of structural engineers, architects, artists, lighting, lighting experts, biologists, anybody necessary. I could show you many icons, you would all recognize them. Uh, our, our premise is that these iconic landmarks are important to community building and to quality of life and that's why we're doing what we're doing. The first phase we had was we funded a documentary film produced by Tom Walmut, who was one of the three founders of our organization, about the relationship between the old San Jose Tower and the Eiffel Tower. That film now exists. If any of you are interested in it, ask me about it and I'll, I'll uh, send you a link so you can watch it. The next phase was site selection, which is essentially what we did in 2018 and that was approved by council this year. The next, the most critical phase, we believe, is the International Ideas Competition, which we'll be launching on Tuesday. That competition will end about a year from now with a design that's chosen. At that point, we'll go back to City Council for approval or not approval. Uh, we expect it to be approved. Just to be clear, um, Vice Mayor Jones, the Mayor, uh, District 3 Council Member Perales, all of the Council are integrated into our plan. We are not going to go through and do this process that's going to cost us a million dollars and then throw a design at them and hope they like it. They're all going to be uh, working ha hand in hand with us throughout this process. So we have, we have no doubt that what we come up with will ultimately be approved. Then we'll be in a very large capital campaign. A common question is, well, what's your budget? We have no budget. This is intentional. We think a spectacular design that costs a hundred million dollars or more will be easier to fund than a me mediocre project that will cost 10 or 20 or 30 million dollars. That's our premise. So a couple of years from now we will be in construction and uh, we expect to be done in a few years. So uh, this is a photoshopped picture of me. <laughs> uh, my partners in this on the board, there are three of us on the board now, are John Ball, retired construction executive, and Christine Davis, uh, who, whom I didn't uh, add to this new PowerPoint yet, but I will. Christine is a retired uh, person, lives downtown. Her family owned Air Systems. She and her husband, John Davis, they've been tremendously supportive of what we're doing. She and John Ball are the greatest volunteers any organization's ever had. There are weeks they give me 20 or 30 hours of volunteer time. I am the only paid staff everything else we've done is through consultants. Linda Lester has been our largest donor so far. Madison, Madison Nguyen has been an extremely uh, valuable advisor and Eric Shainauer who's a, a land use expert has also helped us uh, tremendously. This is a list of some of our largest donors. Linda's given us 150,000. Uh, Bob Keeves Foundation 100. John Michael Sobrato's Foundation 100. The Knight Foundation that many of you probably know 75,000. We've gotten 60,000 from the Hugh Stewart Center Trust. They mostly invest in downtown things. Also, uh, my partner John Ball has given us $60,000 and Jim D'Amico's family has given us $50,000. Environmental responsibility is a critical part of what we're doing. We've worked with uh, the environmental community to make sure that everything we do is sensitive to the environment. Our location is Arena Green 
uh, at Guadalupe River Park. Does anybody know where Arena Green is? Yes. Most of you, some of you, good. Arena Green is the space right next to the arena where the sharks play. So if you can visualize the grass and the two rivers that have a confluence uh, just to the east of the arena. It goes from the arena to Highway 87 and from Santa Clara Street to St. John Street. We've done a lighting study. We've done a, a biology study. We are being careful to make sure that all of the rules associated with the riparian corridor, which is what this is, two rivers meet in a triangle and then uh, our Guadalupe River and going out to Alviso. So our ideas competition, as I mentioned, launches Tuesday. We're going to solicit ideas from throughout the world. We will have a local group called a community competition panel that's going to take what we hope are, are thousands of submittals, choose 50 what we might call semi-finalists, then we're going to have a jury of all professionals um, who are going to evaluate those 50, but they can look at any of the submittals if they choose to do so. Uh, they will choose three finalists, we will give those finalists a stipend, and then early next year those finalists will refine their ideas, come back again for a second jury session. The jury will then choose one winner. We will then go to the city council. Again, we will have been meeting with boards, commissions, and council members and city staff constantly during the next year. And this, the final design will have to be approved by council. And then even again, then we will go into, into our pre-construction and construction phases. The city will still have a moment in time when they have to accept this as a gift, which they could choose not to do if they want. The reason I'm bringing all this up about city oversight is that this is a city park. We're respectful of the fact that we all own the park. Our, our project doesn't own the park. We're just being allowed to give a gift to the city to be placed in the park for the enjoyment of all of us. Our ending, the end game is to create a world-class landmark and a spectacular urban park that respects the environment. Uh, one comment I'll make is that those of you who have been to Guadalupe River Park, in particular Arena Green, know uh, that it's not a great urban park right now, not even close. It's interesting that the segue from homelessness uh, and homeless related issues to my presentation, uh, it's really a homeless encampment to a large extent there now. So these issues that the city's working on in rela relation to the homeless, we are also working on. We're, we're all engaged in that. But we want this park to be like the great urban parks we've all been to around the world, whether you've been to Luxembourg Gardens, Central Park in New York, Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. We all can visualize what these great parks are. And one thing they all share is activation. So when you think of what we're doing, I want you to just to remember one more thing, which is we do not want to simply get this magnificent thing, whatever it might be, and plop it in the park and then say, good luck guys, have fun. We think it's critical that it's an integrated park that has ice cream and coffee and possibly restaurants and bars and maybe visitor center and maybe a school and all kinds of other things. Great urban spaces are not just a big blank slate with one thing dropped into them. So that's a really critical part of what we're doing. Uh, with that, I, I'll take questions if we have time. I assume there's height restrictions because of light now? The question is whether or not there are height restrictions. Uh, every, every site actually in the city of San Jose has height restrictions. This one has uh, significant height restrictions. It's literally underneath the flight pattern uh, to the airport. So in that site, we can go up somewhere between 200 and 250 feet. Just to give you a sense of scale, the existing arena is 130 feet. So the rules just recently, in fact, coincidentally, the same night our project was approved by council, the next item on the agenda was changing what's called OEI, one engine inoperable. Uh, the, the, basically the height limits throughout downtown and we're thrilled because we picked up about another hundred feet meaning that uh, whatever we do could go about a hundred feet taller than the arena uh, in a dream scenario we'd want to go a thousand feet or five thousand feet we can't every, <laughs> every site has its uh, benefits and it has its problems and uh, um, in doing our study that site came out far ahead of all the other sites even though it's not perfect either Yes? I think the name of your group is confusing to a lot of people because they don't know what confluence that about the rivers coming together. I'm wondering, are you thinking of using the water as part of the project or 
or just a, a still object? That's a really good question. The answer is we're open to anything. I expect that we will have submittals that are water themed. So what does that look like? A waterfall, pumps, fountains, a combination of the above, tall towers with water falling off of them. Uh, I hope you have ideas and I hope you submit. Uh, the, we do think we made a mistake in the beginning calling our organization San Jose Light Tower Corporation because you know, we, go, we do this a lot. People think, oh, you're building a light tower, right? Uh, no. Actually, we could be if somebody came up with some spectacular light tower within all the lighting constraints of the site having to do with airplanes, birds, and many, many, there are many other constraints in the report. But uh, I personally hope that water is an important part of this, this whole project. And again, the, this is an important site for our city where these two rivers meet and then, and then continue to head north uh, out to El Viso. Yes? Well, you know, I'm super excited. Thank you. Um, as an early supporter and part of the process of being in here. Um, but when is the design competition idea thing, how long is it run? So it starts Tuesday till when? The actual competition goes for three months, so on October 15th, that's the submittal deadline. Then we'll be in the process of, of the jury working until December. We'll choose the three finalists in December and then finally choose the winning design in May of next year. Okay, cool, thanks. So, any other questions for Steve? He's gonna be here for lunch too. Doris, last question. Um, I was busy setting up back here and I missed, did you mention different countries that this is going out to, different states? Um, how are you soliciting um, people to submit ideas? Our, both our press um, plan and our social media plan are completely global. Okay. So, I actually have my presentation, my uh, my uh, idea right here, but I won't uh, submit it yet. I guess <laughs> most people want to see it, <laughs> but uh, it's going to involve. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, it's a really exciting. Are, are you really going to make a submittal? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I want to point out something that I haven't pointed out before. I I am not going to be on the jury but I am going to be on the community competition panel, which takes all of the submittals and then narrows it down to 50 that we recommend to the jury, even though the jury can choose any of them. That being said, the only person in our, our entire organization who will ever see any of the submittals is our design consultant. Uh, f for the, the competition, and so it's important that I never see any submittals, okay. no, <laughs> so that, no, that so that so that there's <laughs> there's complete anonymity. Because an important point of this that uh, an inexperienced designer might say, well, you're clearly going to pick some hotshot designer, and. No, the answer is we're, uh, nobody on the jury or the competition panel is ever going to know any of the who, who, the names of the people who are doing the submittals. So if you're going to show something, I'd like to yeah, walk yeah. out walk yeah, outside. Yeah, we don't oh, okay. have the time. For okay, it. but the, I can uh, have it on you. And that, those are important points. So uh, obviously, then we don't want to put our name and bolded on there or anything like that on the presentation. I guess all the parameters. Are the one challenge that's come up there is that we're probably going to have submitters post things on social media, and we'll just have to navigate that as it goes because again we don't want any anybody who's making any selections to know who the submitters are because there'd be a potential for bias towards someone with status okay that makes sense um, so Steve I really appreciate I, we all appreciate you coming out